today, as you mentioned, I'm going to be talking about the journey at Zeit. We recently started to convert our blog from an MDX back blog to a Notion back blog. I'm JJ Casper. I work at Zeit as a software engineer on the Next.js core team. And those are my Twitter and GitHub handles. So as I was saying, my name is JJ Casper, and I'm a software engineer at Zeit on the Next.js core team. And I've been working at Zeit since last February, I've gotten to work on a lot of cool stuff. And I'm really passionate about increasing and making developer experience amazing and making stuff as fast as possible. So you may be asking, but why a Notion blog? So it's a good question. Our motivations. We wanted to reduce our build times dramatically. Because it was built with MDX, we had a lot of pages that needed to be built every time we deployed. So this had a lot of downsides, like you need to fix a typo, and now you have to build everything. And we wanted an enhanced editing experience. MDX and can be a very great syntax, but it's not completely content editor friendly like a CMS. So, and it gave us a great opportunity to test drive our new technology called serverless pre-rendering, which is a CDN feature. So as I mentioned, MDX is enhanced markdown that allows you to use JSX, and it allows you can use custom components in your markdown. It's pretty neat and can be useful in a lot of situations. This presentation is written in MDX. So, that is it. so before we started converting our blog to a Notion back blog, we wanted to set out some new requirements. We wanted it to be easy to create, edit, and delete blog posts. That was number one. And we shouldn't have to redeploy our entire site for most changes. And we wanted the ability still to leverage custom components like MDX offered. And we wanted next to no downtime, even if Notion was down. This was very important. So, but we ran into a snag. Notion doesn't have a public API yet. So do we give up? <laughs> of course not. So let the investigating begin. This consisted of a lot of reverse engineering of Notion, watching network requests, diving into the payloads, and it's a lot of fun, but a lot of work too. We mainly noticed three endpoints that were critical to getting our data. There was load page chunks, query collection, and get record values. These were the main ones we found we needed, and we were able to get going from there. So the next thing we needed to do was ensure uptime once we reverse engineer the API. So we created a wrapper API using our CDN that would query Notion using our hacked API. And we use serverless pre-rendering, which is a new technology, as I mentioned, that allows us to cache a page and revalidate in the background. So you get the flexibility and you get the stability and speed of static content. So it's really nice. And if Notion ever went down, our cache wouldn't be evicted. So as long as our cache is populated, our blog is up. So that was a huge help. And then, but what about custom components? This was a lot of discussion went into this. We noticed many ways we could do this, but we wanted a seamless way to do this. So as I mentioned, I'm on the Next.js core team. So in the Next.js part of it, we could use the dynamic import for each component we wanted. And once we set this component and added a dynamic import, it was available to us in Notion. But in Notion, how do we tell it to use that component? We decided on using the code block in Notion and setting it to LiveScript, which we're like, what is LiveScript? Well, we're never going to use that, so let's just make that our custom component syntax. And so it worked. And then, okay. And then we needed to figure out another problem, which was handling the dynamic routing of all the posts to one page in Next.js. At the same time in Next.js, we were working on dynamic routing. We went through many iterations of this in many syntax, but this gave us a perfect opportunity to test it on Zite.co before we shipped it. So this was amazing. And then, 
But the question is, did we make editing post easier? And if you ask my friend Saroop, who was very excited about this feature and is here somewhere, he'd say definitely. We did notice a few pain points, though, which we'll get into in a bit. And but how does it work in Notion? So we want it to be as seamless as possible in Notion. We noticed that you can create tables in Notion, and each field can be almost anything. So the first one we did is the page itself. So you can add the title, and then you can open it up as a page on its own. Then the next is a slug, which we query every time you hit the dynamic page. And if it matches, then we can render it out. And then we have a checkbox, which checks if it's published or not. It allows us to instantly mark it as published and viewable by everyone. Then there's the date we want it to be published, which you can even set it to published and a date in the future. And once it's at that date, it will be vi visible. And then we have our authors, which is very seamless to add, because you can just look it up in Notion, and you don't have to worry about typos. And then we have staff pick and a few other metadata fields that are custom to us. And then, then the other pieces. So the view on the left is what it looks like when you add a new row in Notion. And you can add the post on the left. It shows your metadata fields. And then at the bottom, it's your editing area, which is a very amazing editing experience. If any of you have used Notion, it's very nice. Then on the right, we noticed we need to add author's metadata, like preferred display names, their usernames, and other features, other things. So here's a view of what it looks like editing a blog post in Notion. And if you look at underneath adding wildcard domains, that's our live script hack, kind of. And see, we reference our custom image component. And we can pass JSX props like normal. And it's very nice. And there's that. But now we have a new problem. We had tons of MDX blog posts already in our site. So how do we get those into Notion? Do we spend like a week copying and pasting them? I didn't want to do that. So I sat down for like a Saturday and like with a couple other coworkers, and we tried to parse the MDX out and reverse engineer the other part of Notion, which is adding content. We were able to do that in a few couple hours. And it was pretty neat. So we used first the MDX parser, and we turned it into React components. And then we used Babel to turn it into the AST tree. And then we traversed it and loaded it into Notion. This saved us a ton of time, but also took a lot of work. So then we ran into another problem. What if our cache is empty? Because SPR only helps us if we've already populated the cache. Which this added, gave us a new path to look into, but we needed to handle this now. GitHub Actions to the rescue. <laughs> we got advanced access to this, and it was a lot of fun to play around with. So we used it every time we deploy. We noticed that our cache is wiped, because it's a feature of now. We don't want to have a stale cache from a previous deployment. So we wipe our cache, but now we need to populate it, because we don't want to be down if Notion is down. So once this GitHub action is run, it populates our cache within a few minutes, and then we're good. But this still has a downside, because what if we deploy and Notion is down already? Then we can't populate our cache. So this is another path we need to look into. So we had a lot of lessons learned from this. We had to learn how to parse MDX, which can be tricky, but a huge time saver. Reverse engineering APIs is very interesting. <laughs> Maintaining an up-to-date API level cache 100% of the time can also be very tricky. <laughs> but we also looked into SPR a lot, because we used it ourselves now. And we noticed all the enhancements we could add to it, which a lot of cool stuff coming for that. Like what's to come? An official Zeit starter for Notion back site major enhancements to now serverless pre-rendering, and big features for Next.js. So watch for ARFCs. So not just that, but when we were working on Next.js, we noticed all these dynamic routing things and test driving it. So we sent out ARFCs, and we shipped that. And we shipped serverless pre-rendering. And now we shipped our Notion back blog. And if any of you have looked at our blog, 
you've actually looked at an ocean powered blog now. And we're looking forward to bringing that to the rest of you. So, thank you.